The new year might bring many joyful tidings, but food prices are not likely to be one of them. Last month, the latest edition of Canada's Food Price Report was published by several Canadian universities. The bad news for 2024, overall food prices will continue to go up. The good news is the increase won't be as bad as last year. The report says Nova Scotia experienced the fourth highest change in the country this past year at 6.2%. And while that may drop this year, families may pay about $700 more in 2024. Why? The report says the biggest influences on the sector are geopolitics, energy costs, and climate change. And those aren't about to disappear. I don't think we want another summer like we had last year. Uh, but of more concern, I think, is what's happening with our trading partners for those those food items coming here, right? That's, you know, wildfires in California is definitely going to increase the cost of your salad. The report says there are a few ways prices could be influenced downward, like policies and regulations. Among them, amendments to Canada's Competition Act, or Bill C-56, and the proposed Grocery Code of Conduct. But will they really lower prices? Are they even meant to? Bill C-56, or the Affordable Housing and Groceries Act, was given royal assent 10 days before Christmas. Within the grocery sector, it's meant to give more power to the Competition Bureau to crack down on unfair practices, take aim at anti-competitive mergers, and block collaborations that limit choices for consumers. It also increased the penalties for what it calls abuses of dominance. The Bureau has been chronically underfunded, but uh, I mean, for decades, ever since it was established, it was underfunded. And, but more importantly, it wasn't given the tools. Across the harbor from Halifax, this plaza used to be home to a Sobeys. When the company sold the property in 2011, a 20-year covenant was attached to the deed blocking a new grocery store from moving in, creating what some have called a food desert. Bill C-56 would give the Competition Bureau the ability to investigate these kinds of property arrangements, which, to be fair, are not unique to the grocery sector. It would have to go to the Competition Tribunal to get that order, or, um, as sometimes happens when um, the Bureau says, we're concerned about this conduct, this agreement, whatever it is, um, sometimes the parties will say, well, uh, we disagree with you, but to avoid a fight, um, we'll solve the problem. The Competition Bureau says Canada needs more competition. Bill C-56 aims to encourage that in the grocery sector. The Food Price Report compares having five retailers controlling 85% of the grocery market to that of the cell phone sector. Cell phone plan prices dropped after the competition landscape recently changed. But in that case, it was a merger that influenced prices. People in competition law like numbers, like economists, and we don't have data that links the mergers to increase in harm to competition. We don't have it that's indicating, for example, increased margins and um, potentially increased price. There's not that link. And then if you look at inflation prices on food, the food inflation prices, I think it's acknowledged in some of the reports that you've read that indicate that, in pr that inflationary prices are in fact greater in other countries than in Canada. One of the competition lawyers I spoke with says Bill C-56 is simply spaghetti on the wall. Prices could drop, but it would take time. So what effects will the industry-led grocery code of conduct have on prices? Both industry and government have contributed to the code over the last two years, and it would be overseen by elected stakeholders in the grocery supply chain. And it's meant to bring more fairness and transparency to the relationships between suppliers and retailers both big and small. Listing fees, uh, the cost that a supplier has to pay in order to get their product on a shelf is almost doubled in Canada to what it is in the United States. And you know that's not accidental. If they are limited in what kinds of concessions they can ask their suppliers for, that will take money off their bottom line. Uh, in order to recover that, they might have an incentive to increase prices. In the UK, it took years for a voluntary code of conduct to become an enforced mandatory one, backed by fines. In Ireland, a form of code was first introduced in 2016. The country has since formed an independent agency that oversees the food supply chain. Grocery retailers can be fined for specified unfair trading practices, and they have an agency, like the Competition Bureau, that's meant to make markets better for consumers through policy. The devil is in the details on a code of conduct. Even a voluntary code of conduct could have a dispute settlement mechanism. 
Uh, and as long as that dispute settlement mechanism is effective, uh, there's no reason a voluntary code can't work. When you do something voluntary, you, tr you try and get consensus. And so it might not be as comprehensive as, as other players in the, in the marketplace might like. What kind of code would be in store for Canada? A voluntary one, at least to start. There are no fines, violations of the code would be made public, but not all major retailers have signed on. In Ottawa last month, here's what some of them told the Standing Committee on Agriculture and Agri-Food. I, I don't see the direct relation between having a code of conduct and lower prices. I wouldn't say it's on life support, but it's in dire straits because those who don't like the code are stalling. I'm perplexed as to why other industry leaders are making such confident claims about the code's ability to stabilize prices when it was never intended to do so. It won't increase food prices, as Blabla has claimed. No one in industry would support any measure that would do that. The code was expected to be ready to go by 2024, and even those in opposition right now say they're committed to finalizing it. Music says that in the grand scheme, though, consumers should always expect food prices to creep upward. People do want deflation. They want prices to go back to pre-pandemic levels. And maybe in the medium term, that might happen. But, you know, I think what we can hope for is a deceleration of the rate of increase. We need to fundamentally understand what the issues are in order to realistically address them. Many of them, I would argue, are outside of the control of the, of, of the government. The experts I spoke with say there's no single remedy for rising food prices, that neither Bill C-56 nor the Code of Conduct would cause immediate drops in prices, if at all. But what they may do is help make Canada's food sector more fair and transparent. David Irish, CBC News, Dartmouth.